Once again, you are very welcome on the Ben Live Show. My name is Gifty Nakainga, and today we're live from Serena Victoria Hotel in Chigo. So, uh, being that it's also another episode we are bringing to you, we do have the one and only uh, Nancy Linda Kalembe. And, well, she's an amazing woman. You're going to get to know her more and more, just like you've known her before, but then you're going to get to know her more and more well just at this point of time i'm uh, going to welcome her to first greet us and also welcome us on the show but then we're going to get to know her more in details you welcome madam nancy nice to meet you nice to meet you too. well i'm requesting you to say hello to our viewers that i've not heard from you in a long time and then welcome them on the show dear viewers thank you for watching us today I am happy to be here to speak to you. Um, for all of you who are praying with us for our nation, I thank you. For all of you who are working so hard, especially during this very difficult time of COVID, I thank you so much. And for the children who are behaving themselves, thank you too. Thank you so much. She's so lovely. I just love her voice. But well, uh, she's also known to have contested in the Miss Uganda uh, competitions. And then she was a part of the finalists. We want to get to know more of that. How did she do that? So I've worked in several places. I worked with Sanyo FM. I was in Miss Uganda. I've done... When was that in Miss Uganda? Uh, when I was beautiful, you mean. I was very beautiful when... <laughs> Even now you are beautiful. <laughs> I was very beautiful when I was um, in my 20s. That was 2003, I think, as uh, Miss Sanyu. There, was, uh, there were different competitions. There was a talent competition. Obviously, you said you love my voice. It cannot sing at all. So I didn't win the singing competition. <laughs> I, there, was, uh, there was a wits um, competition like intelligence and I won that one so I became Miss Sanyo that was the award I got I was a runner-up in Miss Uganda so that means I was very beautiful then I don't know if I beautiful if talent. I run now you are now for Miss you Uganda I don't now. know if I would even be you are, the top you are, you are. but it was a good experience oh. it was very it it gave me exposure in a different kind. I joined Miss Uganda not because I thought I was beautiful, quite on the contrary. Um, I was dared by my friends. At the time I was a tomboy. I, was, I wore more jeans and t-shirts than anything. I still wear them now. Mm -hmm. uh, but then very few people could tell whether that was a girl or a boy. So when my friends... So they, then you're coming out to go in for Miss Uganda? Uh, we, were, we were at breakfast at the faculty, at the faculty canteen. And we were looking through the Miss Worlds and we were laughing about some girl who, who tripped and fell in her high heels. I think it was Northern, Northern Contest because they used to do the regional contests. So we were laughing about that. So my friend said, but you've never even worn high heels. You'd probably fall okay. down as well. I said, no, I wouldn't. So I said, okay, Try we it. dare you to join Miss Uganda. Oh. I said, you're daring me, okay. So that's how I picked up the forms and... The point was to pick up the forms and show them that, that I picked up you the forms. Picked the forms but then unfortunately, you... I went through to the top 20. I say unfortunately because I had to face my father after that. And that was a very not nice episode. Was it something you had ever <laughs> thought of running for Miss Uganda or it just came out of No, I blue? never thought of running for Miss Uganda before. But I'd, when I was young... Uh, in the 80s, we used to watch Miss World and Miss Universe. Mm. And I used to like the poise of the girls. I liked the Miss Indias because they were very intelligent. Um, a lot of times Miss India was either a surgeon or a doctor of this. And I thought, wow, that is nice. So that's what attracted me. And the Miss Venezuelas were also very beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I thought mm, it would be nice to go for Miss World. But I thought... It, for me, the exposure I had of Miss World was not about really beauty. It was about the fact that the girls were very intelligent. They used to 
speak well, they had good poise, they were courteous, they were polite. I don't know, maybe, I, like that. I think it's a lot that we can even pick from there. Many people out there are wondering uh, that maybe to be to come in for as uh, Miss Uganda, you need to be this beautiful. Tell us about other things that they really consider for someone to come you see, up for You see, beauty that. is relative. And then what is beauty to you? Beauty is relative, depending on the country you're in, depending on what continent you are. In Africa, beauty is curvy and all that. In Europe or in America, beauty is thin and straight. Um, if you go to Buganda, beauty, you have to have something in the back. Uh, if you go to maybe India or UK, you'll find that the back, the girls are probably straight. So beauty is relative. At the end of the day, the beauty that is within radiates and lasts longer than the beauty on the outside. How, how beautiful people are when they are 18 and in their 20s is not, as you grow older, the way I looked when I was 20, 18, when, if you saw my pictures in Miss Uganda, I look very different now. I've put on a lot of weight, I've probably changed. Mm. So beauty on the outside changes. Um, some people would think that I'm more beautiful now because I'm more, I have more flesh. When I was 20, some people thought I was beautiful because I was very skinny. So beauty is really relative. You it see? varies. It, keeps it varies. It depends okay. on where you are. Mm. Um, I love my grey hair, so I keep it out. And You've had it even before? Yes, I've had grey hair since I was a child. Okay. So I, I like to keep it. Mm. And for some people, they say, Nancy, why don't you dye that hair? And some people find me and say, Nancy, wow, leave your hair out. I, I like it. And they, so it varies. So I always emphasize on internal beauty. That's why I talked about being courteous, being polite, mm. being kind. Mm -hmm. um, when you have internal beauty, that is ageless, that is eternal. It doesn't fade. However old you were, whether you got an accident and you lost your legs, your internal beauty always will manifest, will manifest in different ways. When you, what I like to, the example I like to give is babies. Babies don't care whether you're dressed in rugs or you're dressed in designer clothes. Babies respond to love. And human beings innately respond to love. So however beautiful you think you are, but you don't have a seed of love on the inside mm, of yeah. you, mm. you're worthless. But if you're beautiful inside, you radiate and you, you end up, you know, not only attracting, but you reflect on other people and that, they end yeah. up reflecting mm. what you're giving. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a saying that we used to use when we were young, that what you see, the world is, an, is a mirror. A, mirror. Mm -hmm. a lot of times people complain that these people are bad, these people are this, these people are this. The world is a mirror. Usually we see in other people what we are. If all you see is negativity, anger, pain, pain. jealousy and all that, mm -hmm. it's probably what you are because the world is a mirror. For people who are kind and loving and always willing to help, guess what will happen? They will go to places and they'll say, oh, those people are very kind. Those people are very good. What's happening is they're actually reflecting. And that's even before they're they seeing speak their of themselves. Yes, okay. exactly. That's amazing. Okay. That is what is it about going in for Miss Uganda. It wouldn't only be that beauty. But well, I'm sorry to cut you short, but you were still it's telling right. us how you gotten into that. And then after that, how was your journey like? Um, my journey has been, for the first few years, I thought my journey was random. Um, a lot of people said, you've never been in politics. How did you end up running for presidency? You just woke up one day and decided, okay, let me run for presidency. And actually, no, that wasn't the issue. It didn't just happen? When I was nine years old, I wanted to be three things. One? When I grow up. One, I wanted to be an Olympiad because I was too much into athletics. Athletics. Olympics is about a, mm. sports and all. I wanted to be an Olympiad. I always admired the women who ran with a torch at the beginning of the Olympics and they handed over the torch to whoever and they picked particular people to carry that torch. And I wanted to one day grow up and be an Olympiad. I wanted to bring a gold medal back home 
in a hundred meters. I was a sprinter since I was young. Mm. And so that was one of my dreams. I said at nine years old, this is a nine year old sitting down and planning out her life. I want to be in the Olympics because I was exposed to sports very early in my life. So I wanted to be an Olympiad. Secondly, I wanted to be a lawyer. So tell us, what does it mean to achieve so much as a woman or a girl in both education, even in general life? Um, first of all, I don't think I've achieved so much. But while someone that is looking up to there, like, <clears throat> she has achieved so much. Um, for me to say what it means to achieve so much would mean, for starters, I believe I've achieved so much. And I don't think I have achieved much. I don't think there is... I have attained certain goals. I am grateful that... I went to school and finished. Mm. I don't know what finishing school is, but you never really finished. Mm. You never really you finished never. studying. You never really finished learning. Uh, while you think, I remember when we were in P7, um, when we had finished our final exam, PLE, I thought I was on top of the world. I had, you're finished P7, it's wow. And and then you go to S1 and realize you're the bottom of the food chain again. Mm. And it's one thing to be in P1. I think it's better to be in P1 than to be in S1. Because P7, you've come from glory. Then you're humbled right back in S1. So if you ask someone who has just finished their P7, they think they've achieved so much. Then, and then they go for S1 and, and then realize they are nothing. They're at the bottom of the food chain. They are nobodies. And then you reach a six and you think, I've arrived. Then you, go to university. then you go to university and you think, now I have arrived. And in the end, you're called different names. Then you finish university and you think, I've graduated. I'm, I'm a graduate, Nasoma. And then you meet PhD. You meet people. You meet your lecturers. <laughs> you meet people who have masters, different masters. You meet people who have different PhDs. You meet people who have... Who have then you think, let me do masters, let me do PhD. Then you think studying is it. Then you meet a woman who didn't go to school, but is looking after orphans and has taken many orphans through, many orphans have gone through her hand. Mm. She has educated them, she's not educated. She has educated them, she has fed them, she has nursed them. What, what qualification do you need for that? Then you, meet, then you need, meet a man who has paid school fees for the whole of his village. And he never went to school. What qualification do you need for that? A clean heart. So when you say achievement, it's also relative. What is achievement? You'll, you'll find a rich man who thinks he's very wealthy. He has finished building the biggest house in the village or in the town or in the country. He drives the best cars. That's achievement. Mm. But you may find his life is empty. You will find a celebrity who sings and the whole world listens. And that's achievement. But their life is empty. So what is achievement? It's relative. Mm. I think achievement is not about how many accolades I have I piled have. up. Mm. But how much impact I've had on people's lives. Okay, that Starting is Starting with my children. Have I taught my children well? That's amazing. My neighbors. Am I a blessing to my to neighbors? Them. My neighborhood, my town, my district, my country, mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. People like Maya Angelou who wrote poetry, who wrote. Their words have impacted people and will continue to impact people's lives for years. She's dead. Should we say she has, she has stopped achieving because she's dead and buried? Her achievements still go on because she's still impacting people's lives with her words. Thank you so much. So when you say, how do I feel having achieved? I ask myself, what have I achieved again? Running for presidency is not an achievement. Mm -hmm. It is a journey. Studying is a journey because it never ends either. These, what we call achievements, are milestones. Oh, yeah. And while you achieve that milestone, you're excited yeah. at that moment. But like, then there yes. is another that you But then there's something else you've not done. 
while you're building your house and you're saying, I've built this big mansion, I'm so happy. And then you have relatives who don't have a place to sleep. Then you pass the road early in the morning and you find there are people waking up from caveras mm -hmm. because they didn't even have a blanket. Wouldn't it be more of an achievement if you provided housing for those okay. people? Okay. Wouldn't it be more of an achievement? Yes, I have masters and PhD. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be more of an achievement if I educated more people? Mm -hmm. That would be a big achievement yeah. than how many masters or PhDs I have. So okay. it is a mindset thing. What is achievement? And that's how I see it. It is kind of relative. Thank you so much. Um, that means uh, every person at whatever stage they are at, you've achieved. They have achieved. If you can something. wake up every day and feed that's your children, an that's an achievement. If you can put a roof over your children's head, that's an achievement. That's an achievement. It's just because in this uh, society or setting, we'd be thinking that maybe someone who has a car, someone has a big house, someone who has studied this much. A car can get an accident the, yeah. and get finished. <laughs> and then we forget a house can they catch are just fire and get finished. Okay. Your achievement is I read a book uh, some time back. <laughs> there's, a, there's an interesting series of books called Love Comes Softly. It's, a, mm. it's set in, a very, in the old settlers, American settlers. And the father of that family said, it's not the wealth that I amass. Mm. It's the wealth I live within my children. It, the book is written by Jen O'Kay. It's a very old book. Um, I don't know if it's still in the libraries. But he said, it's how much wealth I leave inside my children or the people who are going to come after me. How many people? It's how much wealth I leave inside them, not for them. Because if I live only for them, it can be squandered. But the wealth you leave inside people cannot, can never be squandered. There is that one girl who's like, I would want to be like her, yeah? But how can you encourage them to uh, live up to their dreams? How, what is it that you can tell them in line of being one better citizen? That is very important. And also taking full responsibility. Um, dreams are universal. Everyone dreams. The murderer also dreams on how many people, how many serial, how many, the serial killer is dreaming of how many people I can kill. Mm. The, the Mother Teresas of this world are, are dreaming about how many people they should feed, they can feed. The nurses of this world are thinking how many, how many people they can save, or the doctors. Mm. The midwives are thinking how many children they can help survive. So dreams are everywhere. When you're a little child, you dream about having the biggest house, the biggest car. Some children dream about being doctors and they want to save. They say, when I grow up, I'm going to be a doctor and there'll be not be anyone who gets sick. There'll not be anyone who dies when I'm a doctor. So dreams are universal. All of us dream different things, whether it mm. is positive dreams or negative dreams. But let's talk about the positive dreams. If you have a positive dream that is going to help your family, yourself, your children, the people who are around you, your parents. To, to make that dream a reality, it's not about where you come from. By the way, it doesn't matter how poor you are. Where you come from does not matter. It is where you're going that matters. And where you're going is determined every day by you putting your feet out of the bed, the first leg coming out of the bed when you're so exhausted, so tired, but you wake up. All of us are on a journey to fulfill our dreams. Mm. Some of us give up somewhere midway, mm. others are, are, are pushers, others have tenacity. So at the end of the day, I can't say this is the formula for fulfilling your dreams. I don't think any human being has that formula. Mm. This, there's no formula for being successful in school. There's no formula for being successful in life. There's no formula for being successful in a family. It's about going at it every day. In the leadership school, the last leadership school, one of the last leadership schools I attended, uh, INT, Institute for National Transformation, we had a saying, do it afraid. Whatever it is, Whenever your dreams are too big, a lot of times we are afraid of them. 
do it afraid. Wake up every morning and say, I'm going to do this. Yes, it scares me. Yes, yes but I'm, I'm afraid, but I'm doing it anyway. So it starts by waking up every day and not committing suicide and not dying and not giving up. It's just doing it every day, whether you're two years old, whether you're five years old, whether you're 90 years old. The gentleman who started McDonald's started his business at 65. And right now, all over the world, we eat burgers, McDonald's burgers. But he went to over 200 banks asking for a loan, and he was not legible for a loan. One, he was too old. Two, it was a startup. There were so many things wrong with his proposal to get a loan. But right now, many years later, he's gone dead, long dead, but his business still thrives on. And there's no such thing as you're too young, you're too old, you're too poor, you're too this, you're just starting out. No one has ever done it before. All that is their words. We had a sister in S1, Sister Cosmos, who used to say, when someone tells you something bad, you say, those are your words, keep them, I do not accept them. <laughs> so when someone gives you discouragement, you tell them, those are your words, keep them, I don't accept them, I don't receive them, and leave it at that. If no one has ever done it before, no one had ever walked onto the moon. <laughs> if I'm too young, where are there graduates in American universities who are 15 years old? If I'm too poor, why is it that people like um, Mama Teresa changed the world and left a mark? Mm -hmm. If I am too old, why is it that there are 90 year olds who are still feeding people and helping people? At the end of the day, there is no situation in life, as long as you still have breath in you, mm -hmm. there is no such thing as you cannot do it. So Actually, it. if you rub that, that phrase out of your mind of cannot do, you can achieve anything. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much. It's just because time is not on our side, but we would love to have Nancy the whole day. <laughs> she's, she's just another vibe, yeah? She's an intelligent woman. But then as we do wind up, I want to thank you so much for keeping with us. Uh, it's The Ben Live, and uh, if you've not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please uh, make it a point to subscribe. It is Ben Live on YouTube, and then Ben Live on Facebook. Uh, make it a point also to leave there a comment in the comments section we shall be grateful for that and if you happen to be new here please just feel at home this place is just about to become your home we're going to be winding up this very very episode but i'm going to be requesting our guest uh, nancy linda kalembe to just give us to sum up everything a package that she would want to give to you the viewers and then she's going to be signing out and we leave this place Thank you for watching us. Um, these are very difficult times we're in, but there's hope. Many have lost loved ones. Many have lost jobs, incomes. Many have lost their families. But it is not the end of life. If you're still breathing, then there's still hope. Let's keep pushing. Let's keep taking that one more step Every day you can take one more step in doing something. If it's children who have lost hope in school, January is coming and you'll be back in school. If it's parents who don't know where they're going to get money to, f to pay for school fees or take care of their families, you're still breathing. That means there's still hope. Let's skip at it. There is no circumstance that is more difficult than dying. The fact that you're still breathing, it means there is still hope. We will get through COVID. It's not the first pandemic that has come to human beings. There have been others, but we have survived. And if you're still living and still breathing, that means you have survived. And you're probably still going to survive. So keep at it. In five years' time, in two years' time, in ten years' time, will probably have forgotten about this episode. So keep at it. God bless you. Amen. She's a, a believer. <laughs> I would even call her pastor, but thank you so much, Madam. No, <laughs> no, I'm saying I, I can't even call you one, but you are not. But thank you so much. We're so very much proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so much for us. Um, 
inspiring many many women even the men that never believed in themselves like you really made them wake up to be like if god still well, loves you mm. if you're still alive it means god still loves you god still loves you yes so thank Not you that so if much you're dead god didn't love you but i mean god still wants you to be alive so so <laughs> that's to be alive but thank you so much we're so very much uh, grateful and then to our viewers of the ben live is so very much grateful and i would love at this very point of time just end the show from here you've been watching the ben live with uh gifting a and uh, our very good guest Naselinda kalembe thank you so much the production team and thank you so much everyone that is going to be uh coming over and over to watch this interview and also share it with other colleagues to be in position to learn learning will never ever end not until you die so thank you so much till next time bye bye